Santiago is a beautiful and historic city nestled between the Andes Mountains and the Pacific Coast. But for the past few months, the city has been a focal point of civil unrest that has spread all throughout Chile. The city has been overcome with marches and protests by citizens who've had enough of high living costs and huge income disparities. Today we're exploring Santiago and inevitably observing the aftermath of this destruction. We have finally made it to Santiago, Chile. Yes, the place that has been in riots, the place that has had civil unrest. We have a friend named Shay who actually lives here and he has a friend, John, and John's wife and kid. We are all getting together this morning and we're heading into Santiago to go and explore. It's such a nice, safe place here that I slept so well and didn't even hear when Frank actually started to pee in the middle of the night in the van. He was playing with Shay's dog last night, forgot to go to the bathroom, which is totally fine, can't hold that against him. But normally, I would wake up immediately and I slept right through it. I cannot believe Trent woke up, cleaned up the pee, took the dog outside, never even woke me up. And this morning I was like, he did what? It happens all the time. Nothing ever wakes Allie up. Which is crazy because I used to be such a light sleeper until until I moved into the van, which is like the opposite of what you would think would happen. But I think it's just because I feel really safe with Trent. I think it's just because we're like always working seven days a week and it's hard work and it's long hours and we're just always ready to sleep. And when there's a time when it's nice and it's a good temperature and it's quiet, we sleep all day. We gotta go get Shay and John, because we gotta head into Santiago now. That we're staying with for a couple days, and his house is insane. He's even got his own <laughs> cappuccino maker. It's amazing, it's like uh, a, a little piece of home, a little piece of America coming oh, here. Water and coffee. Oh, so, yeah, so, Americano. Americano, uh, yeah, exactly. And you have a milk frother, or? Yeah, absolutely. I was just washing it. <laughs> this, is, this is like the upgraded version of our espresso machine, you just like, push the button and it does everything. I have to like manually crank and grind and pack. And... How's it going? Good, how are you? Good. Hey guys, this is John. How's it going guys? He moved down here to actually be a school teacher, but now he is a full-time YouTuber. The Chili Gringo. So if you look up my name, John Gross, you'll find me. Awesome. And uh, just look for the red hair. <laughs> I feel like you and I are brothers though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually my brother. I don't want to tell you guys, but my brother lives in Chile. <laughs> This is a nightmare. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Menu. Still on hot water. <laughs> That's the only one we didn't press. Oh my gosh, dude. I just made a huge mess. It's good. I burned my hand with the steam wand. Oh, no. but other than that, it's great. <laughs> when you pull the steam wand out of the milk, if the machine isn't off, one, as soon as this, the tip comes out of the milk, it's like blowing into the milk. So usually milk will just go everywhere if you like pull it out like mid action. And so I was like keeping it in there and keeping it in there and like one, it's burning the milk and it's like over foaming the milk. And so I grabbed a paper towel and I was like, all right. And then I like ripped it out and I went to cover the steam wand with a paper towel so it didn't like blow steam and milk all over the place. But steam is like really powerful and really hot and it just goes like straight through the paper towel so it just like burnt the crap out of my hand. Oh no. We're off to a great start today. Welcome <laughs> to Chile. <laughs> NBC is where Shay actually works. And there's a huge line of people here, which is like people from Chile that are applying for visas or people in Chile that are from the States that lost their passport or got robbed or need help in some way or another. Shay has the luxury of being able to park in the embassy secured parking lot. So we dropped his car off. We're jumping in an Uber and now we're heading to get some coffee. shop called Singular Coffee. It's an amazing actual coffee roaster here in Santiago. 
We recently ran out of coffee beans. As you guys know, we are coffee fanatics. So we're so excited to be somewhere that actually smells amazing and see some fresh coffee being roasted. Yeah. <laughs> That's really good. good. Well, that was super awesome. Not only did we get to see that coffee be roasted, but then he packed oh, it into <laughs> a personal sized bag and I got to take a bag home. Now we're, we're heading, starving. We're heading to a French bakery. <laughs> it is super cool walking around down here. This city is really advanced. I honestly feel like we're in America. We're in like a pretty hipster part of town. We just went to that nice coffee shop. We're going to a panderia, like a bakery. Anytime you get to hang out with your brother, <laughs> just a good day. It's a good day. It's just so crazy that it's like been like labeled as so dangerous here because of all the riots and stuff. But being here feels really safe and like it feels like a very modern city. These guys are so confident that you're gonna love the taste of their pastries that they have little sample croissants and once you eat one, you're like, I'm gonna have ten of these. So uh -huh. <laughs> I had myself a taste. Now I think we're gonna get some. Lemon cake, some madeleines, maybe a cookie, a croissant, <laughs> a full platter of delicious treats. Oh, it's like I've got a little bit of a lemon flavor. Really good. You want one of these? It made me buy six. Yeah. <laughs> definitely. I'm definitely gonna be eating Kay's one. Kay's ready. <laughs> yes. Let's see if they compare to my wives. Yeah. They're so soft Ooh. and fluffy. They nailed the lemon. It's hard to get that lemon oh, flavor in. Don't tell your wife that. Mom. <laughs> They're similar. <laughs> it's awesome coming to this part of Santiago with people that actually know the area. And of course we love coffee and bread, but we are just suckers for French bakeries. I don't know how we always end up finding French bakeries in every Latin American city we go to, but uh, this one is top notch. It's not very good. <laughs> You're not going to like it. Do you want me to have it? I'll see you later. <laughs> so this place is called Madeleine. If you guys are in the area, you definitely need to come by and try pretty much everything. It's absolutely <laughs> amazing. So take my word for it. So we've made it down here to one of the city squares. So this is actually where one and a half million Chilean protesters stood. On the other side of these trees over here is a big statue where the famous picture that everybody sees of the mountain of people and the people sitting on top of the statue. This is where all the protests took place. This is another statue here behind me. Obviously they've covered it in paint. They've put all different types of posters and graffiti. I think now we're basically gonna take you guys to ground zero, which is where one of the subway stations was absolutely destroyed. We're down in the actual metro station now, or at least this is where the entrance into the metro station used to be before they boarded it and blocked it off. I mean, as you can see, everything that we're surrounded by is absolute. It's been destroyed. It's been destroyed and it's pretty devastating to see what it looks like now compared to what it used to look like. And even though these demonstrations have had an effect, the whole country has taken notice they haven't necessarily had the impact or the outcomes that they were looking for. So right now we're kind of in the lull because kids and university students are out for summer break, but we're expecting the protests to pick back up. There's actually even one scheduled for downtown tonight. So the place that we're standing in right now at 6 p.m. tonight will probably have thousands, if not tens or hundreds of thousands of protesters showing up, demonstrating, rioting, whatever you want to call it. It's just so shocking to be in a place like this where this type of destruction has not only taken place, but like Ali said, this afternoon it's going to be taking place again. It's just weird because when you think about these riots, you think that they're just here all day, every day, rioting, going crazy, but really they just do it like every night. And everybody goes home, goes to bed, and then they come back that night to demonstrate. It's just very different than what you hear on the news or what you expect. Tell Even though the protests seem like they've overrun the entire country, 
The upper class pretty much seems unaffected. Their neighborhoods are still safe and quiet. From what we've learned, the difference in the quality of life between the upper and lower class is the reason for these protests. And the protests might continue indefinitely until the government takes action. So before we head back down to Shay's house, we had to come up to the tallest hill in Santiago, Serra San, San Cristobal? San Cristobal, just like one of our favorite towns in Chiapas, Mexico. And this place is gorgeous. You have a huge view of the city, an absolutely beautiful monument and kind of sanctuary to pray. It's very peaceful up here. John and Elise, you guys live a little bit south of Santiago, and I'm just wondering, I know you guys are getting ready to head back to your house now, what has it been like for you guys as expats living in Chile during all this unrest? So we're from the typical area of Chile, like the Campo area where the majority of the people live. So in a small town, I think the uprising, you feel it more because you know everybody in your community and you know what happens. So if, if a bank is destroyed, that means that your bank is destroyed, there's no other bank. Whereas in Santiago, there are many other banks. Yeah, I think for me, the hardest thing was um, our friends were involved. Really? You know, I mean, I know people that were there when there was tear gas or, you know, that they were doing a peaceful march and they, you know, it's not just something on the news. Does it make you feel safer to know people or more unsafe? I think overall, I felt, I I felt very safe. Okay. I mean, it's just, you just don't go out. Yeah. You know, you don't go out late at night. I mean, I've never experienced something like this before where you can hear protests outside of your window and you can open the window and you can see them marching. Yeah. And you realize how blessed we were before that we've never seen that unrest ever. Yeah. It was really crazy, like opening the window and seeing 10,000 people March. marching by your door. You know, that's insane. That's but crazy. It's kind of cool, though, because they're standing up for something that they believe in. We wish you guys all the best. Go yeah, back and stay safe. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. fun to meet you guys. Yeah. It was so nice meeting up with those guys. If you guys want to follow John Gross on YouTube, there's going to be a link in the description, or his name is Chili Gringo on Instagram. Now, we are actually extremely hungry, so me and Ali have decided to take Shay out to dinner because John and his family are leaving, so we are going to go to a place, I don't remember the name, Strike Burger? Street, Street Burger. What do you think so far of Santiago? It's actually beautiful, and the places we've been to have been amazing. It's crazy that there is a huge disparity between the wealth and and the poor, and yeah. the different populations. Like, it's very stark, and I can totally understand why people were protesting, compared to what the other half lives on. I would be upset too. Yeah. It's, it's just scary. so crazy because like we've been in all these like Central and South American countries and we've experienced all these different cultures and different walks of life and different income levels. And honestly, Santiago is the most like the United States that we have been to yet. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've been to a lot of big cities that were pretty advanced, but here is like the number one place where like I almost forget we're in a different country. Mm. Don't be afraid to come here. I think that you'll probably be safe as long as you don't go mess around with the riots. I think we'll probably be okay while we're here. I know yeah. some of you guys are worried. Don't worry about us. Hopefully you guys learned a lot about Santiago today and hopefully enjoyed coming along on this adventure. Yes, Frank. Frank wants to we say hello. We see you. We see you. Tell the people hello. We wanted to thank you guys for coming along and watching this video. If you found it entertaining, useful, helpful, give us a thumbs up. <laughs> Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. We love you guys and we'll see you on the next one. Adios. <laughs>